I've got to be honest, as I'm thinking about what I'm going to say in this review, it's not really a review. It's more just me going on about how much I absolutely love this printer. And I don't like to spoil my videos up front because people go, well, I've got his opinion and I don't need to watch anymore. But trust me, you do, because there's a very, very, well, there's a few good reasons to love this printer. And I mean, love it. So hi, I'm Ross and this is Fohammer Videos. So I've had a couple of good printers lately, both a resin one and now an FDM one. And the connection between the two is not only that they're both so easy to use and so intuitive, but they've both got green elements to them, which is quite an interesting connection. The Ankermake M5 is hands down the best printer I've used. In fact, this is the printer that they should have been making from day one, from get go. This is something that we should have had for years. And it's taken me working with Anker of all people, I mean, you know Anchor, right? You probably know them from USB chargers and cheap cables that do the job, but they're really, really good. Well, now the Anchor Innovations Company via Anchor Make are making 3D printers, which is awesome because just like their chargers, they work incredibly well for a fair price. So let's start off with what this is. It's an FDM printer and the build volume is 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters. The largest one is height. And size wise, that's fairly standard nowadays. It's not huge, but it's not tiny either. And there's a few other tech specs you can read on the website, such as it boasting 0.1 millimeters, which is 100 microns print accuracy. That's your layer height. And you can get printers that print smaller layers than this, and this will do it too once I figure out what the minimum step distance is on the actual axis, but I've not really tried it. The one time I did, I couldn't get it working, but that's me and I don't know my FDM settings. I'm sure with plenty of tweaking, I could get it down to a lower layer height if I wanted, but to be honest, there's very little value in doing that. Now, one of the things that companies are boasting nowadays is ridiculously fast speeds. So this one suggests that it does 500 millimeters per second in fast mode. Now, I haven't played around too much with the settings, but when it's in fast mode in the simple mode of the slicer, it goes ridiculously fast. And I was able to print an entire life-size Master Sword replica in just nine hours. I set it to print overnight, woke up the next morning, and this was at 0.2 millimeters layer height, and it was done the next morning. That That's insane. So it's a standard size printer with fast speed, but then above and beyond that, it's also got some AI features and a built-in camera. Oh, and Wi-Fi too, that's another feature. And it's quite important to get this one connected to the network. And the AI features that it boasts are pretty special too. Using the onboard camera, it'll actually analyze the first layer and it will notice if you've got any spaghetti messes. That's when your print becomes dislodged and the extruder is just spewing filament into thin air. Do these work? Well, again, that's the point of the review. We'll come back to that. Just keep going. So this printer, yeah, it, it sounds fairly standard nowadays for what printers do. Yeah, there's the AI stuff, but that depends on whether or not it works. But yeah, it's fairly standard. But the best parts of this printer isn't what it does, it's how it does it. It's, it's not that it's smart, it's that it's simple. And for people like me, and I've touted numerous times how much I'm not the tech channel when it comes to 3D printers, I'm the guy who just likes to play with stuff and talk about its features. And if you're a tinkerer, then you'll figure out a way through. This printer doesn't limit that. It just makes it easier for everybody else. So let's start with the smart stuff. Assembly. This is really smart. It's really simple. All you have to do is take one part, attach it to the other part, and then put in eight screws using the included Allen keys. And the Allen keys that come with it actually come in a little toolkit. Like, this printer's gorgeous, and the way it does everything is just incredible. It's more expensive than most printers that do this same thing technically, but again, it's the way it does it and how it looks while it's doing it that make it worth the extra money. Just think of any typical 3D printer and you probably envision some kind of mechanical monstrosity that looks almost jerry-rigged together. Most of these have got more in common with uh, Builder's Unistrut than anything that actually looks like a proper product. But this has sleek lines everywhere. It's more comparable to something like your modern day 2D printer, which you'll get from the likes of HP or Canon. 
every single part of this product is covered in a metallic silverish or black housing. So there's no denying it, it looks pretty swish. And yeah, looks aren't going to sell a printer, but it does go to show just how much they're putting into the quality aspect of this product. Things like the style and also the included tool set just go to show that, yeah, this is a premium product. This isn't just your every old printer that does the job. But back to assembly, what's really clever is how they've thought about the packaging. It's really easy to unbox this printer, but then you actually use the packaging. Yes, you can do this, and most people do do this for building their printers anyway, but this has an actual part of the build guide that tells you where to sit it and even has parts to root the cables in the box so they don't get in the way when you fit the top gantry to the base of the printer. The point is they've they've thought about it, properly thought about it and engineered this into the actual build. And even with other printers, you've normally got a numerous amount of cables to connect everywhere. With this, you've just got a couple of cables that feed through the bottom, clip into some cable clips, and then go into the actual base of the printer. And then once you've done that, there's a part which then clips over to hide all of this. It's so neat, it's so tidy, it's beautiful. But when it comes to using this printer, you see that again in both the UI, the setup, and the slicing. Everything is the same way. It's simple, it's clean, it's beautiful, and it works. Now, the thing you might notice that's odd is if you look on the right-hand side, this is where the screen is. Now, the screen's normally actually attached to the base or a loose component sticking off the edge. This time, it actually moves up and down with the printer, which I don't think that adds or takes anything away. It's just an interesting way to look at it. But on the other side, you've got just an LED arm, which I'm assuming there's some mechanical parts in here, maybe a controller or two. I've no idea and I don't care. But what's really cool is this is also a status indicator that will tell you green when it's printing or orange when it's warming up or there's a warning or red if there's a problem. It's really cool. So I started filming the out of box experience, which took me through language setup, gave me a couple of warnings about cleaning the actual plate that everything is attached to. And then it said, download the app. And I'm like, oh, not another app. I mean, again, I've downloaded the Creality app for their printers. And again, watch those reviews to see my opinions of that app. So I don't really like the idea of an app, but I thought, well, this is all I've got to do next. You can skip it, but yeah, okay, why not? I'll connect to the network and download the app. But this time, I saw the benefits straight away. This app was clean, intuitive. There were no crazy controls or menus to navigate. There's just three options at the bottom. And other than a couple of little quirks, it's pretty darn obvious where everything is. You can control the entire printer and monitor it from this app. And in fact, some of the settings, such as turning AI on and off and enabling the time lapses, is actually controlled in the app. And it seems to be the app only. But again, not in a problematic way like I've had before. It's just easy. So I was still in the middle of the setup and doing some reading online and it had to go through the bed leveling. This was automatic. It just simply goes through the 49 different points on the bed. It does it as you go through the unboxing experience of the printer and it completely and totally auto levels the bed for you. No knobs to tighten, nothing underneath to make sure it's uneven or level. Yep, everything works. Fantastic. And whilst this was going on, I was reading the website and it turns out, well, at least in my case, there's no USB drive. I don't know if that's just me. I genuinely don't. And I've never thought to ask because I've never needed to. You go to the website and you just download the slicer from there, which is essentially a anchor version of Cura. But again, it's done well and it's done clean. So using the slicer that I downloaded to my PC and wirelessly connected to the printer, I decided to slice up a Benchy because, well, if I want to be taken seriously as a 3D printer reviewer for FDM printers, you've got to do a Benchy, right? And using the supplied filament of, again, you get plenty with it. Using that supplied filament, I printed my first Benchy at 0.2 millimeters using fast mode. And this took only 30 minutes. And I understand now why the Benchy is a popular choice. It makes all 3D printer reviews comparable as to regard to how long it takes you to print certain things. And 30 minutes for 0.2 millimeter benches was pretty good. It's the best I've had yet. And the quality that came out at the end of it was, yeah, it was decent. It wasn't the best. There was a little bit of stringing and some imperfections in the build, but it did what it did. And this is just the cheap filament that you get with the printer. It's not the best stuff, I'm sure. But this was when I noticed the best thing I think about this printer. And 
yeah, it's not going to make anyone's life significantly different, but it just helps in such a way that it makes me think, well, I'd already thought before this came out, why don't other manufacturers do this? If you've got any other 3D printer, you'll look at probably an hour into a print and you'll go, right, how long do I think's left? And what you have to do is go, well, it's at 10% now, so it's been about an hour and 10%, so maybe around 10 hours. And then you find out seven or six or four and a half hours later, it's done. You can't figure out how long a print's actually gonna take because they give you a percentage. And obviously those early layers are gonna take longer, especially if you're printing something that's kind of pyramid in shape, which is generally typical on 3D printing. Things tend to get narrower or at least finer points towards the top. Anyway, while I've been talking about this, you've probably noticed the best thing I think with this printer. It's the fact that it gives you a countdown timer. It tells you at the beginning of the print how long the print's gonna take, and then it counts down to zero. It does this easily because it calculates how fast, how much print you've got to print, how fast the print head's gonna print, and then it calculates down. And if it stops halfway through, then it just pauses the timer. It's the most obvious thing, yet Anchor are one of the first people to do it. And it's brilliant. Every printer company is able to do this. They always have been, but nobody bothered. This is the sort of innovation we have needed much more than people making faster printers just to up the numbers. So I got bit by the Benchy bug at this point, and I saw on the website that they actually said you could do a Benchy in 17 minutes, 40 seconds. But I was also playing around with the app to see where I could get a time lapse made. And it turns out you do need to enable this in the app for it to happen. But when it does happen, it just automatically uploads the time lapses. They're not the best quality, but it will upload them to the cloud and you can easily just download them with a single button press. And the camera is also night vision, so you can monitor your prints at night. Or you can turn the lamp on and it's actually got a built-in LED light, so it'll light up your print. So you've got that choice of whether you want a time-lapse which is in night vision or a time-lapse which is in full colour. But for me to try and get the best quality, I just left my lights on overnight. And whilst I was looking in the app, I also found that there was a little bit of not really a storefront, but just a bunch of exclusive and fun looking prints that Anchor offer to you to just directly print from the app to the printer. One of which was the 17 minute 40 second Benchy. So I had another go with this in fast mode and yeah, it's okay. There's a little bit of deformation on the front of the boat, but it's fine. I mean, we probably wouldn't print at these speeds, but this is decent quality. And I just kept printing and printing at this point. And one of the things that was available on the app was a little box for storing memory and SD cards. And I had this printing, but unfortunately, well, fortunately, so we can review it, the printer ran out of this sample filament halfway through. But as you would expect, the printer detected it, paused the print job, let me know via a notification in the app, I got the closest-ish looking filament in order to finish the job and then just swapped it over and press continue. So a few benches later and one SD storage box, which it didn't come out good, but to be fair, the second half of filament I used is absolutely terrible and the stuff you get in the box is pretty cheap anyway. It didn't go together all too well, but it does the job and it at least shows you what a printer can do in a really short amount of time. There's a bunch more things in there and I'm sure they'll add more as time goes on, but yeah, if you've got a pre-sliced file, you can just upload it to the app and control the printer remotely from your phone. And again, can't say this enough, really fun, really easy, really straightforward, really simple. This is exactly what printer manufacturers should have been doing for years. So it was time for me to swap over to some different filament, and I don't know what's a good filament and what's a bad filament, but I do know that this Sunlu PLA Plus hasn't let me down yet, so I picked some up in this bright vivid green because I think it accents the colours on the printer. And guess what I printed first? Yeah, that's right, it's another Benchy. Look, I'm bored of Benchies, you're bored of Benchies, but again, I just wanted to test this to see if I got any better results with the PLA Plus. But again, if you watch this playback and you see the results at the end, you'll notice that once again, it's got a bit of deformation on the front of the boat. So it, it's not that good. The 16 minute 40 second Benchy, or sorry, 17 minute 40 second Benchy isn't that great, but it can be done. Let's print some more fun stuff. 
So like most people right now, I've been bitten by the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom bug, and what that means is I obviously want to just print everything to do with Tears of the Kingdom or Zelda or anything like that that I can get my hands on. And I found this really cool collapsible sword that I decided to have a go with and just see if this would print. Now unfortunately, because I'd got my fingerprints and sweaty hands all over the build plate, it didn't actually stick. And you would expect that the printer would warn me at this point, but because of some of the other things I've been doing, I actually turned off all of the AI stuff when I was in the app, so that was a bad idea. I probably should have left this on. But after a good wipe with IPA and then printing this again, I didn't change any settings, and again, I used simple mode in the slicer. I just sent this to the printer remotely, that's the thing, everything goes remotely, there's no USB drive, you just sit there on your computer and like with a 2D printer, when you've sliced it, you click print. Dead easy, dead simple, again, every other manufacturer should be doing this, they don't, it's terrible, this is why you should buy this printer, it's simple. But anyway, I just slice this again, click print, come back a few hours later, or at least I think it was the next morning, and then I found that I had a completed print. Well, it should have been a completed print, unfortunately, what I ended up with was 90% of a completed print and a load of spaghetti, because yeah, I still hadn't turned the AI settings back on. Now unfortunately with this print there were other issues such as the blades which should be collapsible were actually fused together inside. I tried to cut them away from each other but it just wasn't working. So I decided to do what I've known you should do for a while but start actually noticing these steps and work out the percentage of filament that's extruded so I can set this properly in the slicer. And I did this by measuring it up, extruding a certain amount, seeing what the distance is and then doing a calculation to put the percentage differences when it does extrusion. But unfortunately this did didn't help either. So as I showed earlier, I found a model online which is the full Master Sword. And just to give an example of how good this build plate was, I was able to get all of the parts and the handle, everything on one build plate. And despite these being separate components, the entire sword printed almost without issue in nine hours, nine hours. I literally clicked print, went to bed, woke up the next morning to parts of a Master Sword. That's, that's fantastic. And it does even come with some tabs that you can print. Now, I could have printed these along with it, but just to keep the print area clean, I decided to do these afterwards in one quick 15 minute print and a bit of sanding and filing and gluing later. And I have a complete master sword that was all but printed overnight. As I'm coming to record this now, this morning my daughter was like, are you going to print me one of those articulated dragons? And I've been putting this off for weeks because, look, I review printers. I normally have one on my bench and then I have to clear it and get rid of it so that I can get the next printer review out. And I've only got one bench. But because this was so easy to set up, as soon as she came in and went, can I have one? I was like, yeah, what colour? It was set up within five minutes, I'd sliced it two minutes later, and i just clicked print from my computer. I didn't even have to get up, and I had a work meeting like five minutes after that. And that's exactly what this printer does. It removes that barrier to entry, so you can just click print. That's as simple as it is. So long as you've got some decent filament, and yeah, stick with simple PLA stuff, this is a simple printer. You want to do tinkering, you want to play with the settings, yeah knock yourself out, go ahead. You can pretty much do anything you can on this with any other printer and upgrade it in much the same way with different hot ends, nozzles, and all the things that you want to. But if you want a printer that is just plug and print, I have never seen better than this. It's insane. This is what printers need to be going forward. And if all the other brands don't learn from this, then I'll be honest, I'm probably not gonna care that much. Now that I've seen this convenience, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to go back. Oh, I've got to be honest, I do feel incredibly energized after recording that video, and that was insane. I've probably put more passion and emotion into that than anything else, but color me shocked. Look, I love it, guys. I think it's fantastic. It's not for everyone. If you want a cheaper tinkerer's machine, then yeah, go for one of those. But if you, like me, just want something that does the job, then I haven't seen anything better than this. Yeah, it's not cheap, but it's not expensive either. This is a reasonable price. If you want to buy one of these printers, then I would ask you if you would kindly click our affiliate link down below before you make a purchase. This is at no extra cost to you, and we will get a kickback just for making this content, and it's how we keep the channel alive, along with the support of all of our wonderful patrons who, without them, we wouldn't be making these videos. But I also want to say thanks to Anchor, not just for sending me this, but also for opening my eyes and everyone's eyes to show us just how simple 3D printing can and arguably should be. 
But until I see you guys next time for that video or they make something in the middle of it, then thanks for watching. Fohammer out.